Hello, everybody. This is Nick with Audio Video Export. It's an absolute pleasure to have everybody here with us today. And thank you so much. And a special thank you for Antonio Legoreta from uh, South American Sales, who's the sales rep company for Revel and the Harman uh, Luxury Series, whether that be the JBL Lifestyle, the JBL uh, Synthesis, the uh, Studer, uh, I mean, all, Martin Logan's, um, I'm sorry, not Martin Logan, Mark Levinson, forgive me. Um, is an ML, right? So uh, just uh, thank you guys so much for for spending your time here with us today, and uh, Antonio, especially for you, um, for for being with us to talk us to us about the new Performa B system for um, Laravel. Uh, just as a quick note before we get started, there is a question uh, box. So if you do have a question, feel free to ask. Uh, sometimes I'll interrupt Antonio if, uh, if I think that it's worth it to to add it in there. And sometimes uh, we expect that we will have a Q&A time afterwards. So feel free to do that. Thank you so much. And uh, Antonio, thank you. Thank you, Nick. Well, today we will talk about the latest and greatest uh, from Revel. B or Beryllium is what you think, but it is so much more. Let's look at the best line of speaker ever created by Revel. Hmm. This is great news. Well, as Nick said, my name is Antonio Liorita and I'm working for South American Sales Professional Division and attending the tech support and project design for Latin America. And also I'm the sales manager for Mexico. Here is my email. If you want to write, drop me a, a note. More than welcome. Thank you. Well, the agenda that we are checking is go through these items and state how a salesperson should present the speakers while offering demos that bring out the qualities of the low speaker. It's the most emotional part of an audio system. We will check some of the background history, competitive advantages, understanding the VE models, and also Let's check uh, some systems with Mark Levinson and Arkham. Well, the beginning of this is creating a dynasty. Dr. Sidney Harman founded uh, Harman Cardon in 1953 to build the highest quality receivers and invent, wow, that product category. Well, think that all the high file uh, components were separated at that moment. Bernie Cardon was the senior technician and built an, an empire of the best companies in each field. Bo Mark Levinson in 1993, partial, do you remember Madrigal Labs? And fully at 95, the best home audio electronics in the world. Create a speaker brand with the steam and performance of Mark Levinson. That's what's the, the goal. And it's still today with the 500 and 5,000 series. With Arkham, of course, you can have stereo and home theater audio at affordable entry levels. Well, well, if you compare the prices of the Mark Levinson, of course, as well as state the, of the art immersive audio and for an AK video. Like the 400 series, Le uh, Rebel Performance B breaks new ground in high-end low speakers with uncompromised performance and value. Performance B exceeds our expectations of performance. While the first three use a cabinet der derived from the performer, quite similar, they are not a perform performer. And it looks similarly dilutes the complete new approach. The B low speakers are all new engineering development. And also we include a center channel for multi-channel users. This is very important because the most important channel in a home theater is precisely the center channel, since it involves not only repro reproducing dialogues, but also music and realistic panning effects. So 
Why Before that? you continue on that, uh, Antonio, you hit on such an important point right now. Most people, when they're considering their home theater, if you're doing just a stereo system, obviously you're just doing stereo. You got left and right. You don't need the center channel. But most people are so undervaluing the importance of the center channel in a theater. It's doing 80% of the audio and mm -hmm. almost all of the dialogue. I mean, it is so important to make sure that you got, you know, you, you see oftentimes these huge, um, you know, in wall uh, left and right speakers, but then they've got this little tiny, teeny, you know, center channel for the, oh my goodness. It, it's a, it's a faux pas. Definitely. Whenever you guys are doing this, make sure you, if it's a movie room space, pay special attention to that center channel. It is so important. What a good point, Antonio. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Because so many times, as, as you remember the first, uh, surround home theaters, the center channel, uh, power output was uh, so lower. Uh, quite similar to the surround uh, low speakers power output, 30, 30 watts and so on. It, it wasn't not enough in order to get the same performance as the left and, left and right front low speakers. So if you want to, be, uh, to obtain a realistic effect about the uh, home theater soundtrack, it's necessarily to get the same performance from the fronts in, in the center channel. That's why we are not just reproducing dialogues, voices of the artists and so on. No, it's more complex the task that the center channels have to handle because it implies also music and also panning effects from left to right and center. If you are expecting, for example, watching a movie from uh, uh, 007, when you saw the the two cars, uh, BMW and uh, uh, Aston Martin running, and they are starting, for example, at the left uh, from the speaker, when the, it passes the sound at the center channel, it not converts in a Volkswagen. You are expecting to get the same effect as the BMW and also the Aston Martin running from side to side on the on the screen. That's why. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue about this. The first uh, expertise in speaker engineer with an entire team of engineers with a vast amount of knowledge in speaker system engineering, transdu transducer engineering, and mechanical engineering. It takes a team to make a line on speakers. And while we have all seen pictures of Dr. Harman and Kevin Poix in creating the brand of a special note is Mark Glazer. It's a good friend of mine, principal engineer. Mark was hired or he originally by Infinity in 1989 and was with them the uh, Harman purchased the company. He has been the principal engineer and rebel since uh, the original Ultima and the new Performance B line. Been able to take proven and meaningful measurements of the second aspect of great engineering. This is Mark Glazer. Well, let's let's see here this picture. This is how a laser interferometry is performed to analyze the movement of the cone or dome in a uniform manner up to, uh, to its breaking point of distortion. Check this, wow. Non-pistonic cause resonances. So if you change the materials, you can see a uniform uh, graphic and no resonances at all these measurements is among many, many, many tests. Okay, what we measure is correlated what we hear, of course. The only way to do that scientifically is to take out the variable position, viewing of the speaker and level so that all is left is sound. That's why we are looking for. From this listening test, changes were made in our measures at seven point weighting so that the direct 
and sound that comes from the speaker is weighted and with reflected sound, especially those around 45 degrees and weighted more than other angles. Correlated so that we can now predict the listening test. We have been able to do this for 20 years, but we also have new tests that cannot be detected in a frequency response pin test. Also, we, we are doing another measurements called Clipper measurements. Clipper is a measurement system that detects distortions in a row drivers that were so much difficult to find in other methods, just for, uh, checking, checking the materials, we have been able to detect distortions and optimize modern structures of the, uh, in, our, uh, in the speakers. I have been doing this by Clipple since 2014. Our drivers are more linear and lower in distortion. So, while the Twitter is new, that's where we are talking firstly, every component part of all the BE series is new. A new Twitter with BE was developed. Then, mid range and woofers that would keep on with the improvements in the Twitter and then in all new crossover. Beautiful picture. We would, we would have to say that the Twitter, which must produce the nuisance in music, in their detail and air, is most reproduced in the, uh, is the most important components part. B of all materials is the best Twitter material. And this was the first start of the development. A large motor was needed to drive the new diaphragm and ultimately a new Twitter faceplate or waveguide. An acoustic lens was developed also. Of course, in total, compared to performance tree, the benefit is reduce compression, extend frequency response, and greatly increase dynamic range. Harmonics about 20,000 hertz bring in detail resonance can create distortions in audible frequencies causing ringing in audible frequencies. That's not a desire, of course. As you see in this uh, graphic, aluminum breakup at 20,000 Hertz, it's terrible. So it affects also the audible frequencies that we can hear. Well, the Verilion Dome Twitter in the bookshelf and uh, first standing new speakers versus the motor structure versus the performance tree. Well, simply put the motor structure is massive when compared with the performance tree and more output and lowers distortion, of course. That's the benefit. Oh, but if you're thinking, what is a Twitter waveguide? What are this guy talking about? The Twitter waveguide refers to the faceplate, this, this part, around the Twitter that is shaped in a concave manner, not unlike a horn in a compression driver. Its function is to limit the, dis the, <clears throat> the dispersion or directivity into the room at low frequency range of the Twitter, where sound is naturally dispersed very wide. Mm -hmm. B waveguides are made out of metal, not plastic, not cheaper plastic. That's a minor point. It's the shape, okay, that has evolved, that has improved directivity over the years. So why we need waveguides? One of the most important things 
we learned that during the acoustic research and listening test <clears throat> is that the sound that bounces of the side wall, floor, and ceiling have a significant impact of the perceived quality of sound that we hear. These sounds, to quote Dr. Floyd Toole, he's a consultant in Herman, should be similarly the same as direct sound. <laughs> in most rooms, as you can see in the block of the on the elect, the combinations of the first uh, reflections can be just as more as important as the the direct sound. A Twitter without a waveguide simply does not work as described in directivity. Mm. Directivity is the term, talking about technically, is a term used to describe the way of a sound source frequency response changes of axis. Okay, as we can see, this is the direct sound, but what happens with it bounces on the ceiling, on the floor, or on the walls. A wide directivity sound maintains amplitude, some pressure level, SPL, consisting consistency between the on and of axis sound. Axis of axis. Okay. An arrow directivity sound is where the off axis amplitude is substantially lower than the on axis sound, such as a bird horn. A low speaker directivity depends on the diameter of the radiating driver and the frequency it is reproducing. Lower frequencies have a wide directivity and higher frequencies have a narrow directivity like a light spot for a fixed size diameter drive. So how would this create a problem in a low speaker systems? Let's use a popular six and a half inch two-way low, uh, bookshelf low speaker, for example. As the frequency transition from the uh, woofer to the tweeter, which is controlled by the crossover, there is a large discrepancy in the radiation sound due to the large diameter of the six and a half inch woofer and the much smaller one inch tweeter, as illustrated in figure one, in figure two, sorry. Um, figure two, six and a half inch two way bookshelf radiation without weight. How this affect uh, the low speaker sound? Mm -hmm. Referring back to the figure one, the discontinuity of the radiation pattern in the crossover transition region, 800 hertz to 3000 hertz, produce a sound imbalance in the first reflections. Wow, the result is that it's a, big, a little bit confusing sound. Well, one of the most important things that we learned during the acoustical research and listening test is that the sound that bounces on the side wall, floor and ceiling have a significant impact. Okay, yeah, that's it. Sorry, I'm drinking some, some water. So what is the solution? A Twitter way guy is used to control the directivity or coverage of the Twitter so that it's the more closely resembles the directivity of a woofer or mid-range, almost the same side, and the same size of the woofer or, or a mid-range. This is critical, critical to achieve a more balanced output from the important first reflection angles. And you see all these is the waveguide plate, the Twitter here, acoustical lens here, positioned here, and waveguide flare. Okay. So you can see a lot of samples that 
made of during so many years. Six generations of web guys from introduced to the original performer review each generation, refine directivity <clears throat> of web guy to make more consistent the directivity and increase efficiency of the Twitter. As you can see, this is the, the first generation of the performer and also the second generation of Ultima 2. Third generation performer train, that is the current model that is so many uh, floor, uh, floor standing and bookshelf speakers are using right now for the performer tree standard and also for the new Concerta 2, the fourth generation for this. And fifth and sixth generation also, we can see the two transitions from the Performa BE. Okay, acoustical lens, what's this? This part and this, mounted on the, on the acoustic, uh, uh, acoustic wave. The acoustic lens was introduced in the Performa to increase the high end frequency response and sensibility. Uh, let's put an example. It's like wearing eyeglasses that improve your vision. As you can see, this is without the lens, and this is the frequency response using the lens. More flat, more accurate. Okay. So, if we check this Twitter summary, uh, we we will see all the improvements then that with all of these improvements in the Twitter, we need to develop, of course, a new drivers to keep up the B Twitters. So, oh, sorry, I'm so fast. So offering a frequency extensions, inner detail, motor improves higher power handling, more SPL, 6 dB increase in sensibility comparing with the standard performer 3 Twitter. And also the way that provides directivity. Mm. So that better overall blending to mid-range or woofer. In, in this case, if we are talking about a, a bookshelf low speaker. <clears throat> okay, what's going on with the mid-range and woofer? We are using a plasma discharge, creates a coarse ceramic coating in both sides of the aluminum core. Hmm. After last, specifically, much improved dynamics. Mm -hmm. So we will discuss the, this aspect more when we review the models. The result is very light and rigid. That's the best performance that we are looking in a comb of the mid-range and woofer. So with the mid-range, five and a quarter inch mid-range driver, new cold shape, then with the largest diaphragm and the smaller surround increase, efficiency, of course. If we compare, for example, with the performance tree, the current performance tree, more output and greater dynamic range we can get obtained on the BE series. What about the woofers? Well, new six and a half and eight inch woofers, of course, and new high flux woofer magnetically assembly. More linear flux in all motors due to improved linearity of the motors. Check this out, the Ultima woofer. What we can see is the, the cone is inverted and also use titanium for the material of the cone instead of the mixture of uh, ceramics and aluminum in the cone of the BE woofers. And what about the crossovers? This is a nice view for all the, the people who are uh, uh, love the, the technical parts. The improvement crossover components, of course, 
What are the benefits? Well, talking briefly, less electrolytic caps, more film and air core inductors, less metal core inductors. That's beautiful. So what's there, uh, what are the benefits? Improve output, reduce compression, and also the dynamic range of the speaker is obtained. Also, we increase the low frequency output. So many people love that. And we can deny that about that. Okay, here is the highest quality component safe for the twill in the performance tree. The range of the models. Here is a look in the light of the first time of all models were together as a family. Mm. And one of the two of the first model that was produced and available for resale was the smallest. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Performa B, M126B. Well, I'm not reading all the, all the slide, but the high order crossover with thin capacitors, air core inductor woofers are smaller for wider dispersion, of course, and a smaller woofer equal to the smaller baffle, the front, the front of the, the loudspeaker. And awards and reviews about all of this. I'm not telling that this is one of the best loudspeakers that ever created by Rebel, but the critics are agree and are agree with me. Okay. The Performa B M one twenty six B includes a port pro for use in a bookshelf. How about hmm, high end multi room system? And you can also use with a subwoofer, of course. By the way, absolute sound product of the year 2018. Mm -hmm. We can choose two, two sizes of woofers, subwoofers, 10 inch or 12 inch, and according to the performance of the performance B. Okay. What about the floor standing, the F226B? Uh, we are touching the surface of just how great, how grand these new loudspeakers actually are. Uh, well, in, they introduced very late in 2019. There have been very few published review hints of this story. <clears throat> Had narrower, narrower than the M126B, all new cabinet structure, of course, 2 dB more efficient than the F206, much more detailed and uncanny imagine. And also blends into the decal, very wide friendly. <laughs> So we are not we are not uh, forgiving our wives at all. A lot of finishes, glove finishes, silver, walnut, if you prefer something woody, white, and of course black. And the green in all of them is black. And all the towers can be be wired if you want to use in that way. The Performa B is while you're talking about that, uh, Antonio, do you find yeah. or does uh, Revel and Harman prefer or recommend by wiring or not? Ah, OK, you can use two techniques about that. By wiring, sometimes it's a noticeable effect when you are using different uh, uh, AW, AWG di uh, diameters of the cable. 
if you are using the same uh, diameter of the cable, it's not noticeable the, the effect of, uh, when you are by wiring. But if you change, for example, a uh, cable that is more um, AWG, for example, for the base frequencies and uh, thinner, for the high frequencies, you can find some so many changes in in that. A thinner cable is probably um, more resistant and less capacitive instead on, of using a cable that is so um, so heavy, for example, for the base because it's more capacitive and less resistance. It has the benefits that is it's something about that using a certain kind of uh, crossover using the, the by wiring cables. If you want to check and test, why don't you play with it? You can find this uh, fascinating because in this way also you can uh, check different uh, cable materials and also size and, and diameters of the cables in order to get the best performance of your loudspeakers. Play with it you are free to do that we do have uh, some options for some really good by wire wiring and cables exactly what antonio was talking about from straight wire and when we're talking about levels of audio and quality that revel and mark levinson and arcam are are touting um and with good reason they you know they do what they say that they do uh, it's definitely important to use a high quality cable now here at audio video export we carry structure cable products um, which has, we sell boatloads, I mean, of the, you know, 16 gauge to conductor cable, which is probably the most common speaker cable it is that we carry. But when it comes to this level of product, we, we would prefer that, you know, you're spending a lot of money, don't go cheap on the cable too. And the science proves that having a little bit nicer of a cable makes the experience much better. Not only that, you know, make sure that you're also doing, you know, some some good firm and product in the back there, not you know, not just for power protection, but also f for uh, AC uh, filtration and uh, conditioning of the of the electricity, because that has also been proven. So, just sorry, a little bit of a hijack there. Apologies. Mm -hmm. No problem. But uh, if you can try, for example, uh, certain diameters for the base uh, base unit, uh, choose twelve or 14 caliber and for the high uh, high frequency response you can choose 16 uh, 16 uh, caliber in order to to get the best performance for the high frequency response also check that is not only talking about the cable but also for the connectors if you are using for example naked uh, cables is not uh, the best performance that you can get using that and so many integrators uh, forget about using uh, bananas or space connectors it's not not only uh, give you a pleasure to to connect the on the terminals of the multi-channel for example the uh, uh, amplifier but also it's the best performance that you can get using all the surface of the connector in order to to get the best the best contact on the electric signal so don't forget about that and use the best cable that you can get for the money also there is a small uh, rule that you can use when you are uh, uh, selecting the all the accessories that you are getting for the for your system as uh, assigning for example 10 or 15% of the total amount of the audio and video system, you can get a better idea what you have to spend with about the uh, buying the cables, power conditioning, and so on in order to get the best performance equivalent of, of the performance of the audio and video, video equipment. Hmm? Okay, so... About the, the floor standing uh, has very close to the salon too in listening test, not possible, yeah? Really. And also the Stereophile 2019 product of the year. Wow, that, it sounds sacrilegious, but it's real. I'm not uh, giving you 
uh, an illusion about the view by uh, a performer be low speaker you can get the the same performance of the ultima 2 series quite close i'm telling the truth okay for the performance 220b double the power handling of the f 226b with deeper bass and dynamics mm, that's really cool okay all the new f328b the best speaker berry made by rebel well 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 new cabinet new twitter and wave guide mm -hmm. Okay, let's do something about the woofer and also in the crossover. Oh, sorry, but looks like a F228 with an extra woofer. No, definitely it's not. Let's check it. 30 pounds heavier than the F228 reports can be within a couple of inches of the wall boundary wow so we can get a lot of things quite different with, with uh, comparing with the f228 mm. multi-layer mdf cabinet mm. the midran enclosure also use a side brace excellent excellent idea and the twitter height 48 inches perfect at 10 feet with the ear height at 39 inches hmm. less 40 degrees if you compare for example the <clears throat> cabinet size you can see, for example, the smaller floor, floor standing, the F226B, and, sec, and next the F228B, that it's more deeper, and so on. Better to either high also for than the Salon 2, which was, mm, sorry, a little bit high. That is a little complaint that I got it's from end users that it's a little bit high, this, the high of the, of the Twitter. And also you can see the dual report and the cabinet, I promise that it's super rigid. Okay. <clears throat> All the new Twitter, it's a sixth generation web guy. Largest web guy, blending radius compared with the fifth generation, improves, of course, the directivity about 7,500 hertz. And the motor, of course, new venter chambers mm -hmm, with a strategy damping, lower mechanical resonance, at a 60 hertz and the index in those inductance the modulation ring around pole this ring mm -hmm. is to linearize inductance largest magnetic assembly comparing with the f228b motor all the best twitter ever made by rebel all new Mm -hmm. And three overs, why not, are better than two. Mm -hmm. Third woofer with largest and closer mm, volume increase, dynamic range, and also optimized design has extended low frequency response. As we can see in this graphic, the flux of our energy is the same. Linearity, better notes, better symmetry, and lower distortion. Mm -hmm. Supersedes the 
titanium wafers used in Ultima 2 series. Okay, all these specs, if you can enjoy it, no problem. But as a summary, is linearity, better notes, better symmetry, and lower distortions supersedes the titanium woofers used in Ultima. It's not a fashion that you can see all the white cones, but you can get a real benefit in sound, definitely. I'd, I'd like to, before you move on to the next slide, talk a little bit about, you know, just, no, 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 the, yeah, there. Um, no, no, the specification sheet. People oftentimes are uh, not pairing speakers that can support such a wide range of amperages between you know, wattages between 50 and 400 watts. And they're not pairing it properly and they don't know what um, or how to properly specify an amplifier. So they'll take an amplifier, whether that be an audio video receiver, you know, and it only puts out, um, I, I'm not going to say brands because we sell a lot of the brands, but many of the brands that are there in the entry level and even mid range level, they're, they're promoting, you know, they'll say that it's 120 watts amplifier, but the audio video receiver it, when they're promoting that 120 watts, just as a number to throw out there, it's oftentimes mm -hmm. measured at one channel driven or two channels driven maximum at a specific frequency, um, mm -hmm. at six ohms. It is not all channels driven simultaneously. Usually you get about 60 to 70% of that if you're driving more than, more than two channels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they'll say, oh, well, I've got 120 watt, you know, but they're only actually getting about 70 to 80 to 90 watts per but what, what's the best, uh, I've got an answer for it, but it's always good to hear a different perspective. What's your recommendation? You know, if this speaker can take 400 watts, what size amplifier should we properly be putting on there in order to be able to maximize the, mm -hmm. the, the performance of the speaker? Okay, think about that. The Most of the AV receivers are using right now, for example, play, uh, class D digital amplifiers. Okay, uh, your power consumption is lower right now. That's the, the great news, but the performance is not not the same. I know that it's so efficient, efficiently these kind of amplifiers, but it's not the same performance like a class A B uh, power amplifier. So keep in mind that using for example, separate components such as uh, AB processor and separate power amplifiers, you can get the best the best power output available in uh, comparing with any AB receiver. I absolutely agree. Whenever you've got the opportunity to go with separates, definitely go with separates. But again, the question going back to, all right, we've got separates now. What size amplifier should I be putting on this? Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, should I be putting on this? Okay, uh, think think about uh, conservatively uh, 100 watts is necessarily at the end. But also, if you evaluate how is your um, taste, choice of music and SPL that you are handling, so keep in mind that you need a lot of power and also if you check the, the size of the room that you are using for. Also, we can um, bend the rules using more subwoofers instead of just channeling all the power output of the AB receiver uh, with the front speakers. So you can use them more efficiently than handling the lower bass at the subwoofer and not handling in the front of the speakers. So in this way, you can get clean power output from the AB receiver. So uh, 100 watts and upper, upper uh, power output, it would be a good idea. So um, an, an, old, an old motto that we have at the 70s with the hi-fi, uh, the hi-fi market is invest on the best uh, device component, audio component or video component that you can get with your saves, with your money. So 
please don't be picky. If you are choosing, for example, a 50 or 60 watts per channel, it's not enough. Uh, definitely in, when you are demanding more, more power output, more dynamics, and also we, if you are, uh, I don't know, for example, uh, doing a, a test with a, uh, with a movie, any movie that is, has a lot of dynamics require a lot of power output. And you are right when so many specs of the amplifiers, the amplifiers and also AV receivers, when they, they are using one frequency, for, uh, 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 frequently with the 1000 Hertz, because it's the central frequency in all the in all the spe uh, spectrum to, to, to 20,000 uh, kilohertz. That's why they are using the, the as a central frequency, one kilohertz. And also, there is it's a little bit tricky because so many are using, for example, that the, the low, the low uh, load um, output uh, uh, device is uh, six measured at six, uh, six ohm. So the amplifier, of course, it delivers more power output. Well, I, I'd like to add in addition to all of that. So it, it really depends on who your customer is, because mm -hmm. if your customer and people oftentimes get this confused. All right. So I've got one amplifier that's 100 watts and I've got another amplifier that's 200 watts uh, and I'm powering. Everything else is exactly the same. The only thing that I'm changing, obviously, we're just talking pure theory right now. Mm -hmm. If all we do is change the amplifier and double the wattage, all we're going to be doing is getting three decibels more of volume out of that mm -hmm. speaker. That's it. By doubling, by doubling the wattage, all we've done is given us three decibels more, mm -hmm. um, which is not a lot. That's the lowest perceivable difference in audio that the human ear can perceive. Um, so it's important for us to understand that while we want the power, uh, we have to balance, right? How much money do we want to invest into the system? Are we looking for a greater overall volume, which again, doubling, so if you wanted to go to double it again, you know, so now you go from 100 to 200, you've, you've doubled it, uh, you've got 3 dB more. If you wanna get 3 dB more now, you have to go from 200 to 400, right? So the difference between 100 and 400 watts is only a 6 dB level of difference. But remember that decibels is logarithmic. So, mm -hmm. 10 decibels is a doubling of perceived volume, right? So at 6 dB, we're not quite at the doubling point yet, but it is going to be a lot of additional volume. But more specifically, when we go and we're giving this speaker, like the F328BE that we're looking at here on the screen now, if we give it that full 400 watts that it's looking for, compared to a 100 watt amplifier, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Antonio. We're not gonna get a whole lot more volume out of it, but what I found is that we're going to fill out the bottom end more because tweeters are highly efficient. You know, with five to 10 watts, you can get 96 dB quite easily on a, on a tweeter, depending on the materials and the brand, et cetera. But mm -hmm. on the low end, if we're going to really be pushing that volume, you know, in order to be able to balance out the speaker, I, I try to, when the budget allows us to be able to give it what it's looking for. So if it wants 400, I generally go for a 400 to a 450 watt amplifier. And, uh, and that seems to have been worked out well. You I mean, so long as you're properly, as an integrator, setting your limits, setting your preamplifier, setting your uh, adjustments the way that you're supposed to. But I want to max that out as, as much as it is that I can possibly do and do a little bit more because the 400 is generally a, a, a maximum. It's a peak, but it, it's uh, sustained. It's not a peak for momentary in general. That's so. right. That's right. Absolutely. And also the power output is it's not cheaper. It's expensive. It's very expensive. So, yeah, that's right. And also, if you're trying just to get the three bits, uh, in order to get the difference between these and those uh, amplifiers, is a lot of uh, investment that you are doing right now. So, mm, taking uh, keep in mind that if you are having uh, limited uh, power output, you don't get the, the best part of the of the of the party. Definitely, that's right. But if you invest for, uh, for your money, the uh, good quality power output, 
definitely you can get the best of all the world. Mm -hmm. This, and it not implies that the I need to to put a 400 watts for this uh, low speaker. No, 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 man. It's just the the power output that you can get in a, in certain peaks of the music. The, the, the music is, is 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 plenty of dynamics. So when you are getting, for example, uh, a, a double bass in a in a rock concert, and boom, it sounds in this way and not blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you can feel frustrated about not getting the the best the, uh, the best uh, dynamics that you are expecting for these low speakers mm -hmm. and also check this so many uh, people uh, disregard about the sensibility about the the speakers that is the ability to get with uh, a few watts great uh, great sound with no uh, running out the, the power output of your amplifier. That is uh, medium sensitivity, 95, 90, 9, 9, uh, 91 dBs. That is enough to use, for example, 100 watts or 200 watts over output amplifier and get the, the best sound and not uh, feel frustrated that it's run out with the, the, with the power of the Euro amplifier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's continue. Do, 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 do. So, if you come, uh, so many people are asking me about, uh, well, if, how we can compare with the Ultima 2, the Salon 2 against the F328B. Okay. Well, we're out of time, but <laughs> the F. 328 was developed a dozen years after, so let's take a look. Response in listening window. The response of the 328B is smoother. You can see the blue line, the red line, below is the Salon 2 frequency response, and you can see also that the has a smoother response in this area okay we're talking about uh, up to the thousand kilohertz thousand kilohertz and also more efficient 60 bits that we are uh, talking about so there you yeah. go that's one good way in order to be able to get your 60 bits instead of doubling your or quadrupling your amp yeah that's right mm -hmm. so Good news for us. <laughs> so that's the best Twitter in Rebels history. Wow. Oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> All the refinements and the way by geometry comparison with the second generation of the Ultima 2, the way by of the sixth generation of the F. 328B waveguide is shown. No improvement in the overall directivity. And the smoothness of the F328 waveguide. Definitely, and you, you can see some valleys and peaks with the response of the Salon 2. Ah, surprise. So we can get. Uh, center channel, the C426B. What we get, it's five and a quarter inch DCC aluminum cone with cast frame, quadruple six and a half deep, deep ceramic. <clears throat> and also <laughs> plenty of handling power from 50 to 300 watts. Also, the impedance is the typical 8 ohm, nothing less, nothing choice. And you can see that it's a vented low speaker, and you can also use the technique of by wiring or by amplifier your center channel. Not bulky, as the uh, as I remember the 
the voice too from the Ultima series that it's so 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 big the this center channel and it uh, matches with the acoustical output of the F228B of course mm -hmm. you can see no problem okay we're going to review some suggestion of possible systems with Mark Levinson and Arkham, which without a doubt are excellent combinations with the Rebel Performance B. Let's see. This is a combination that we have with a pair of bookshelves type of speakers with their pedestal. The benefit? of a pair of speakers of this type is obviously their size, those speaker practically disappears in the area, excellent image and three-dimensionally in sound. The low frequency output can be compensated with the addition of a subwoofer if desired. Here we see is the MSRP price that we are suggesting using this integrated amp, SACD player, and the couple of bookshelf speakers. Here, you can see also the same combination of electronics with Mark Levinson, but right now with the F228B those speakers. We have floor standing type speakers, very good low frequency output suitable for any type of music and in this other combination you can see the top of the model of the performatory b with a lot of detail and imagine and a wide sound stage on match it dynamic range and high sound pressure handling that will enable enjoyment for any musical taste. Of course, it, has a, it costs a lot of bucks. And what's going on with Arkham? With Arkham, of course, we could see a glimpse the solution of two channels mm -hmm, with a full metal jacket series this stereo and also we can think of an alternative of multiple channels in surround and even immersive sound using an AV receiver or an AV processor. Let's see. This is a nice combination of a 120 watts stereo integrated amp with a CD player for people who keep physical media like CDs, and why not adapter table with moving magnet or moving code for no pickup? Again, if more low frequency output is required, we can add a subwoofer if it's required. The price, as you see, is better also, and you can get the best of these low speakers using this electronics from America. With this other option, uh, this would be the beginning of a multi-channel system using an AV processor, the AV4 in this case, and power amplifiers. This one is a uh, two-channel, 220 watts power output and power amplifier. It's an excellent pair of floor standing low speakers for uh, left, and, uh, left and right fronts. And here we can add the center channel from the same Performa 3B series. And also select Rebel speakers from the architectural series necessary, for example, for surround speakers or even an immersive system. You can start with this at this price. 
of course, you can use letter uh, power output uh, less, uh, uh, for example, a 100 watts uh, seven channel mm -hmm. uh, amplifier for the surrounds and the higher speakers in an immersive, immersive uh, system. Two, two, two. What a lineup. Uh, bookshelf, three models are for standing, and the center channel, of course, for a home theater system. Mm -hmm. Better. Thank you. If you if you require a quotation or something about uh, prepare a, a, a project in order to get the best performance of these low speakers, don't be hesitant and, and call us. We are gladly help you about using uh, the right combination of electronics and the speed. um i think we lost you antonio uh <laughs> oh, there you are um anyway i just uh wanted to say thank you all to our attendees uh for everybody who was here in attendance and and especially to you antonio and uh, especially knowing that you've got to repeat all that in spanish in two days uh very very much obliged and what amazing information there are demo packages that are available uh with a slight discount so if you guys have any need for that please do get in touch with us um your your salesperson here at audio video export if you're watching this recording and you need more information on it and you don't have a salesperson here in audio video export please get in touch with me nick at av-export.com my pleasure to be of assistance to you. Bear in mind that we only serve Latin America and the Caribbean. So uh, make sure that, uh, you know, for anything domestic here in the United States, you'd have to contact Rebel directly for that. Um, that being said, uh, please, you know, here at Audio Video Export, we like being your first point of contact, whether that be design, sales, inventory, pricing, uh, whatever the case may be. Antonio is definitely available to us whenever it is that we need him and he's a great resource for us and we rely on him heavily um, but there's a lot of stuff that we can do here in-house without having to bother him because he's got other bigger things to do than deal with us sometimes but uh and i know he doesn't feel that way i'm just saying that but um we're, we're, we're we want to be your first point of contact that's the point so uh, please do get in touch with us again. If you don't have contact here with audio video export, you don't know who your salesperson is, get in touch with me directly, nick at av-export.com. And Antonio, thank you so much, man. That was that was really awesome. And uh, we're, what great information. I can't wait to get my first set over here. We're waiting for him for our new showroom. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we moved here to a new office about a year ago. And uh, we're only finally now starting to get the showroom in order uh, after everything uh, that's been going on for the last last little bit, but uh, we're getting close to it, and we're looking forward to having a pair of uh, of Revels here, powered by some Arcams, and uh, it's exciting. So thank you guys so much, and uh, have a great, wonderful day. Thank you, Nick. Take care.